Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Eleni and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Technical University of Berlin. In this talk, I will present to you Agora.io, which is our envisioned unified ecosystem for Earth observation that aims to contribute in boosting EO data literacy. This is joint work with my colleagues, whose names you see on the slide, and we recently presented this vision at the Big Data from Space conference, which was organized by the European Space Agency. As you might know, with the recent advances in satellite technology, Earth observation data archives are growing at an exceptionally fast rate, not only in volume, but also in diversity. We now have a high amount of multimodal heterogeneous satellite data to monitor our planet from space. As an example, the Copernicus program, which is a European Union's flagship Earth observation program, has sentinel satellites that acquire roughly 12 terabytes of images per day, and the total size of the Copernicus archive is almost 20 petabytes today. This uh, wealth of satellite data from Copernicus is part of the European data economy and presents a unique opportunity to deliver significant impact in different applications, such as agricultural monitoring, water bodies monitoring, analysis of urban areas and climate change research. The big growth of the EO data archives over the last years naturally resulted in the emergence of several platforms and tools for storing, managing, processing, and analyzing Earth observation data. This slide uh, shows a simplified but representative overview of different technologies that we have today. These range from simple data portals, through which users can download your data based on specified criteria, to data cubes that provide the data in an analysis-ready format, removing the burden for data preparation. We also have cloud analytics solutions that make it easier to process large amounts of your data as users no longer have to download and process uh, the data in their own infrastructure. Lastly, multidimensional array databases can be used to store and manage spatial raster data. Uh, overall, we have a lot of tools today for sharing and processing your data. The technology is mostly there, but the landscape is very fragmented. There is no single platform that connects the different datasets of interest from all over the world intelligently. All existing analysis platforms rely on heterogeneous technologies with different interfaces and data formats, which prevents cross-platform use. Uh, for example, it is nearly impossible to apply an analytics procedure developed on one platform to another one. Uh, as a result, collaboration among different users is also difficult and the human expertise is therefore also quite scattered. To overcome all these limitations, we envision a unified ecosystem infrastructure that we call Agora.io for sharing, finding, assembling and running datasets, algorithms and other tools. In other words, Agora.io is a collaborative platform for Earth observation applications that handles all assets that are needed to define and execute data management and machine learning workloads for Earth observation. These assets range from data, algorithms and compute resources to even processing platforms and human expertise. Uh, essentially, Agora.io's innovative infrastructure allows all interested parties to contribute both Earth observation data as well as technologies without having to upload them to a common server. To understand better what Agora.io does, let's see an example of how a user can interact with our ecosystem in a particular Earth observation data exploration scenario. Consider a business analyst who works for an insurance company that holds insured objects in a spatial database. Now assume that the analyst wants to estimate the amount of flood damaged properties in a particular city in Germany during an ongoing flood event. To do so, she first needs to find a time series of synthetic aperture radar SAR images, for example, from Sentinel-1, that matches the desired spatial and temporal constraints of the event. Next, she writes a threshold-based algorithm to compute water masks from the stack of SAR images. She then decides to provide the threshold algorithm and the derived water masks in Agora EO. 
This way, another user can use this artifact directly. Finally, she searches for permanent water bodies in Germany, finds uh, the corresponding dataset, uh, and subtracts the water bodies uh, from the previously generated water masks to receive a flood mask. In the next phase, uh, assume that the business analyst uh, wants to apply and automate the workflow for determining flood damage properties on a larger geographical scale, for example, for the entire Europe. She now decides to train a more sophisticated deep neural network asset to extract water masks from SAR imagery because manually fine-tuning the thresholding approach does not scale in practice and is difficult to automate for sentinel one data. She again searches Agora EO uh, for assets uh, that provide water bodies and SAR imagery in Europe, and she also searches for existing neural network segmentation algorithms. For the SAR imagery, she finds several regional and national scale data assets uh, providing SAR as analysis ready data, uh, for example, as data cubes. To train a more robust and less biased model, she would like to train the neural network for semantic segmentation of the water masks over all available data. Thus, she wants to train the model collaboratively among a diverse set of available uh, data and combine the training results into uh, a common model. This is a difficult and very compute intensive task, so she does not have the infrastructure for it, but she can actually use Agora.io to run her analysis. To enable this uh, motivating example, it is important uh, first to leverage all relevant assets in the ecosystem, uh, regardless of the platform that contains them. Uh, second, uh, provide uh, fast response times uh, for efficient exploration. And third, provide federated analytics uh, capabilities uh, because the required assets might be located on different platforms and moving the data around uh, can be uh, very expensive or even uh, impossible. Satisfying those requirements is very challenging. First, Earth observation data is highly heterogeneous and does not conform to a unified data format. This makes data management, uh, that is storing, querying and composing assets, uh, particularly hard. Second, the data assets are highly scattered across multiple sites and platforms, uh, which makes conventional AI-based analytics hard. Uh, in the rest of this talk, I will mainly discuss how Agora.io enables interactive data exploration despite the high data volume and heterogeneity. So data heterogeneity is the first challenge that we need to overcome. Let's look a bit deeper into what makes the data in Agora.io so highly heterogeneous. In fact, to enrich data science applications, researchers and practitioners combine Earth observation satellite data with other data sources that are typically spatial or spatial temporal in nature. This can be, for example, data from sensors and IoT devices, data collected from social media like uh, geotagged tweets, uh, it can be demographics data, it can be data about the population and the income level, uh, administrative boundaries, temperature data, and so on and so forth. Uh, these data sets that I just described come mainly in two different forms. From the one side, we have satellite imagery that conforms to the so-called raster data model. And from the other side, we have spatial data like region boundaries that conforms to the so-called vector data model. This slide shows how the vector and the raster data model look like. The vector data model represents spatial features with their geometry. Typical geometries are points uh, like uh, GPS locations, for example, uh, lines uh, such as roads or rivers and polygons like uh, you can see on the slide uh, that can, for example, represent uh, regional boundaries. The raster data model on the other side represents the study area as a collection of pixels, where each pixel is associated with a specific geographic location, which is the case in satellite imagery. Traditionally, we have systems for vector data, we have systems for raster data, but we do not have systems that natively support the two data types together. 
Therefore, to answer queries that combine both data models, like calculating uh, the average temperature, which is a raster per city, which is in vector form, we need to transform uh, the vector data to a raster format and process uh, everything in a raster system uh, or vice versa, transform the raster data to a vector format and process everything in a vector system. Uh, the problem is that both transformations are very costly. Ancora IO uh, encompasses uh, both vector and raster data sets, as well as both vector and raster processing systems. Uh, to enable their efficient exploitation, it involves a query optimizer that optimizes complex queries across different data models and different processing systems with the goal of minimizing the amount of data transfer and transformation. Queries in Earth Observation Data Exploration oftentimes uh, retrieve raster images based on whether they satisfy a certain condition for a given region. You can see an example on the slide. Here we have a cloud mask image and a polygonal region, and we want to select the image only if the presence of cloud is, is less than 1% within that region. You can see two cases on the slide. Uh, in one case, the polygon overlaps with the cloud, so we do not want to select this image, while in the second case it doesn't, so this image will be selected. To perform this selection operation, we propose to extract the boundaries of clouds from the image and then approximate them hierarchically. Now, looking at the example on the right, assume that this shape represents a cloud. We start simplifying the shape by removing uh, vertices progressively, uh, as you see on the slide, um, until we reach a very simple shape, such as a box. We then store uh, the entire tree uh, of these polygons. Looking now from the top down, each level in the tree provides more detail. Having this polygon tree, uh, users can choose uh, the desired level of detail and trade precision for response time. Uh, filtering based on the higher level of the tree will be less accurate and might violate the cloud coverage condition, but it can be done faster. Uh, after a first fast fil filtering with relaxed precision, the user can decide to progressively refine the result, in which case the lower levels of the hierarchy will be used to perform the filtering. The previous approach was about how to convert raster data into a query-efficient hierarchical vector representation. We also provide a technique that does the opposite. It rasterizes the vector data. Assume again that you want to combine one input polygon, uh, which is in vector format, with one input image, which is a raster. To achieve that, we first map the vector polygon to the set of raster cells that intersect with it. Uh, and then we have both input primitives in the same format, and we can easily merge them together, as you see on the right-hand side of the slide. Uh, now there is a catch here. As I told you just before, rasterization is an expensive operation. So how is this now a good approach? Uh, the trick here is that the rasterization operation is a fundamental computer graphics operation, and therefore the GPU is very optimized for it. So what we do here is offload the rasterization to the GPU, and this way we achieve high efficiency. Finally, looking at the bigger picture, we want to optimize the execution of complex uh, queries that span both data models and potentially different data systems. That is, given a query that combines data which resides in different systems, we want to derive a query plan that determines the part of the query that will be executed in each system. The execution is therefore decentralized, uh, that is, we distribute the query over different systems, but the optimization is performed centrally. To enable efficient data exploration in Agora.io, we also provide a query by example functionality, which can tremendously help users, particularly non-expert ones, search for relevant data within the data deluge of the EO archives. Existing tools usually allow searching by geographical extent, acquisition time, or type of sensor, but they do not support searching by the semantic content of satellite images, which is crucial for many applications, uh, such as mapping burned forests or flooded residential areas. In Agora.io, as you see on the slide, uh, the user can simply provide an example image of a burned forest, and then Agora.io finds all relevant images that show other instances of burned forests. 
We achieve this using uh, novel indexing techniques that are developed by my colleagues in the remote sensing group at TU Berlin. Uh, these techniques embed high dimensional image uh, features into an efficient sparse representation, for example, uh, binary hash codes that uh, provide low latency for ingestion and retrieval. Standard machine learning algorithms require centralizing the data before training. This can become problematic in a NEO setting uh, because Earth observation and other geo-referenced data sources are often particularly large in volume. Additionally, centralizing data sets might be impossible due to data constraints such as privacy regulations or legal issues. To overcome these limitations, in Agora.io, we plan to support federated learning. Uh, in federated learning, the learning is performed collaboratively among distributed clients without centralizing the data. Essentially, the data stays local while the training gets orchestrated. Uh, each client uh, generates a local model and then the training orchestrator combines all the local models into a shared global model. Uh, this uh, reduces data transfer uh, to a minimum uh, and models can generalize across Earth observation datasets and not just on carefully created data, which leads to more accurate and less biased models. Uh, federated learning also allows Agora.io to unlock restricted datasets for answering EO-related questions. This is particularly important because today many public authorities and private industries remain reluctant to share their data with third parties for confidentiality, privacy and legal reasons, or even because of the economic value of the data. Uh, overall, with federated learning, Agora.io aims to break up Earth observation data silos to accelerate research. This brings me to the end of my talk. In this talk, I presented to you our vision towards an open and unified Earth observation ecosystem for sharing, finding, composing and executing uh, Earth observation assets. Our ecosystem encompasses a large variety of assets that goes far beyond data. It also includes algorithms, tools, computational resources, human expertise and many more. I showed you that thanks to efficient algorithms that combine raster and vector data, we can enable exploratory analytics. Furthermore, Agora.io enables cross-platform Earth observation analytics. That is, instead of centralizing the execution, it only centralizes the optimization to decide how to distribute a given task and provides the primitives to help the underlying processing platforms do the actual processing job. Uh, finally, Agora.io aims to also decentralize the training of machine learning models. With Agora.io, we uh, aim to make Earth observation technology easily accessible to everyone and enable collaboration at a global scale. This project is a big team effort uh, and Agora.io is actually part of an even bigger project, Agora, which is a more general purpose ecosystem for data science and AI innovation. Uh, not just for Earth observation use cases. You can find more details on our project website that you see on the slide, and I will also link on the description below. Um, thank you.